feeling real good, man. Real, real good, man. I like Call your knock this on the Nasty Nate, man. Ride out, ride out. Hello and welcome to Big Dash Knows. Big Dash Knows what? New York Giants football. Let's go. So Joe Shane said a lot today. Unfortunately, he said a lot of nothing. Depending on how you feel about it, it was a lot of nothing, especially since the title of the presser was a pre-draft presser, but I didn't get any answers. And you know what? You're not supposed to get any answers, and the GM is not supposed to be giving anything away. It's too close to the draft. You can't, you can't give away too many clues and he's fantastic at that right now joe shane has become a pro in the whole hide you know throw the rock hide your hands type thing whatever whatever that saying is he, he he's that he's not he's tight-lipped he's not giving us any kind of details any kind of information there are a few rumors out there um that he didn't speak about in the press or they didn't ask him about but there is a rumor out there that the new york giants you know offered a second round pick for brandon Ayuk. shout out to ricky you already if you know you know what i'm saying but um again we'll see how that plays out we weren't the only people to you know inquire about brandon Ayuk. but anyway anyway let's talk about this presser and like i said he didn't give us too much about you know the draft he did say that like the wide receiver class is deep this year um you know he said that we had a lot of needs um, he wasn't focusing on just one position thing when it comes to six to set and the third and as much as you know the beat writers tried to push they kept talking about quarterback kept throwing things out there he was doing a good job of just olaying it he was getting out of the way of these of, of a lot of these questions and you know at on one hand i'm happy on the other hand like i you know as a fan you want a little bit more information but again we know what it is we have a professional as a gm now um a lot of teams don't know what we're gonna do and for me i like it that way it, it gives us some excitement for next week um for pick six and we will absolutely see what happens so let me dig into these notes but before i do that before i do that um if this is your first time on the channel please hit that like and subscribe button if you are a new york giants fan a new york giants fanatic make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if this is not your first time here and um you've seen my face before and you're not subscribed to the channel shame on you shame on you but guess what you can fix that by hitting that like and subscribe button right now so let's get into some of these topics and i do have the handy dandy notebook because i had to write down some of the stuff that i wanted to talk about so again so one thing that they said and this is um you can get this information off of giants.com where they said you know some takeaways you know from the presser i have my own like i said i watched it and then i went to see with some of the other notes to see just in case i missed some things but but in, in regards to their draft board they believe that uh the final draft board should be set by this friday evening so they have their draft board set they're still doing some moving around right now they believe they just got all the medicals back that they that they needed they uh he did say that they didn't lose a lot of players due to medical so that's good to know and of course when anybody's talking about medicals a question was asked about michael Penix and how they feel you know as far as his health and he did say that you know he did have the injury history in indiana he had two healthy seasons and um in washington and right now that just shows you he didn't have any swelling to stat in the third so like Penix is still in the mix whether it's six whether it's 47 that's something that we'll find out in another time but also he talked about um that he was surprised at the number of phone calls that he's getting from teams behind him you know calling asking about the pick what will it take to get the pick six and he was surprised by it now i'm not surprised by that we looked at what minnesota did you know they ended up getting getting uh or acquiring the 11th and the 23rd pick so they have to you know they're trying to move up into that top five or top six area you know or try to move up to try to see if they can move up even further to try to get their quarterback so i'm not surprised maybe denver reached out to him maybe the oakland raiders reached out reached out to him those are two quarterback needy teams as well you know we don't know exactly who all he didn't say who was who was calling but he said that he was surprised by the amount of intrigue um, that he's getting you know from teams behind him so that's a good thing if if we don't feel good about a quarterback that's left or, or you know if, if if these wide receivers end up being the ones that are taken pretty early will joe shane accept a, a trade package to move back and here's the thing if you if you're trading back from six you better get a haul you better get a haul and you better build this team but let's see what else i got here as far as these notes go um 
Again, yeah, he talked about the wide receiver. Like, obviously, everybody's thinking neighbors, uh, Dunze, if Marvin Harrison Jr. falls, you know, that that those are targets. He did say that the wide, this wide receiver draft class is very deep. Top to bottom, he said it was very deep. And we are that's another thing that, you know, we already knew. People that are, um, you know, following uh, the prospects and stuff like you see the wide receiver names. You can go all the way into the third round and get you a high quality wide receiver. Now, you might not get a blue chipper day one X, X guy, but from the first round all the way to the third round and even some steals on 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 the on day three. They're, this wide receiver class is very, very deep from Marvin Harrison Jr. to Javon Baker to Brendan Wright. There, there's a lot of guys in between that that are, that are high quality. And again, he did confirm that he also believes that this wide receiver uh, draft class is is, is, is good, is decent. Um, in regards to Darren Waller, so we'll, we'll move the draft stuff to the side for right now. He did also talk about Darren Waller. They asked him a question about Darren Waller. Um, has not heard anything from Darren Waller has not spoken to um, his representative, his teams, nothing like that. He is aware of the situation about him, him contemplating retirement. We already knew that, but he said he did not, he did not give Darren Waller any kind of deadline to report. You know, you have everything right now is voluntary. You do have the mandatory that's coming up next in, in, in the next phase, but right now he has not set any pressure has given like i believe what he said was he he has given darren waller his space or giving him his space to let him make his decision and i think because one here's the thing if you get rid of if you get rid of darren waller you save some money you know i don't think that the tight end position is, is something that you're eyeballing early in his early in his draft um and again you do have the draft split up into three days so if we if we go into day one we get a quarterback and then all of a sudden darren wallace says i want to come back then you know you don't want to make any sudden moves right now because that's something that could happen and then also again this tight end class is not the strongest class anyway and i think we brought in a, a, a lot enough bodies at tight end that um that we you should we should be pretty good as far as it shouldn't affect what we're doing in the draft darius slayton now the news dropped yesterday that darius slayton is holding out he didn't go to uh voluntary workouts you know, he wants a new deal with the New York Giants after signing a new deal just last year, two year deal, I believe it was $12 million. I think his, you know, something around $6 million this year or, or you know, I have to look up the numbers exactly. But the whole point is he's not happy with the deal he has right now. And um, I will say this, honestly, you know, I went back and forth, um, you know, it's Darius Slayton, this, that, and the third. Okay, when I look at some of the receivers in, that got money, that got paid either this year and last year, that are around the same stats as as Darius Slayton, guy like Hollywood Brown, you know, these guys are making substantially more money than Darius Slayton. Now, Darius Slayton did decide himself to take less money to come back to the New York Giants. So, after you do something like that, you know, what's the deal here? Now, for me, I'm thinking that Darius Slayton, Darius Slayton just wants, you know, um, certainty. You know, whether he wants to be a New York Giant or not, he wants, he he only has one year left on his contract. Maybe he wants to be here a little bit longer. Maybe he wants to see this thing through. Maybe he wants to not worry about being a free agent, you know, in 2025. So he wants to get a deal done now. We don't know for sure what's going on, but Joe Shane does. He said that he spoke to um, Darius Slayton's, Slayton's team. He knows exactly what he wants. And um, right now they're leaving things leaving things as is. There's not going to be any movement there. And, you know, Joe Shane is standing his ground. He is contracted, you know, for 2024. So we'll see what happens with that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Also, yeah, so they did ask him a question about the quarterback room. And he said, you know, as far as Daniel Jones, he doesn't have a crystal ball. He expects Daniel Jones to be back. He expects him to be the starter. And every time this man talks about Daniel Jones in the last few months or since the season, and it's all it's always the word expects, expects. And um, to me, that's a, there's a lot of gray area there. Now, some people that just take that and run with it like, yeah, he expects him, you know, to be here. But you would say he was more definite in 2022 going into 2023 or i should say yeah 2020 going into the 2023 season that you know daniel is the starter type deal now it's all about expects but again you hear what you want to hear take it how you will uh, process the information as you wish but he did say that 
if the season were to start right now, he is comfortable with the quarterback room. He is comfortable with the combination of Daniel Jones, Drew Locke, and Tommy DeVito. He said that. He is comfortable with that QB room. Now, here is the thing. Like, I'm, I'm calling smoke on that one. That might be just my personal opinion. I am calling smoke on that comment right there. There's no way that you're comfortable with the quarterback coming off of that, coming off of ACL with a neck injury, even though Daniel Jones called it a stinger. There's no way you're comfortable with that. And then you have the uncertainty of Drew Locke, who's another project type of quarterback. And then you have Tommy DeVito, who was also a project quarterback, developmental quarterback. Even you can say the same thing about Drew Locke had a little bit more success in Seattle, but he's also developmental. You know, there's some upside with Drew Locke, but we already seen what Drew Locke is for him to say he's comfortable going into the season with just that mix. Those three. I'm calling smoke on that. We'll see what happens. And uh, also, we've never seen the New York Giants do more work, more research on the quarterback position than we've seen this offseason. Um pretty much everybody's coming in for the for the top they're all the top what top seven guys if you want to say it you got they they brought outside of Caleb Williams of course Caleb Williams not visiting anybody but you had Drake May Jaden Daniels Michael Penix JJ McCarthy Bo Nix and then also Spencer Rattler all coming in for top ter, top 30 visits they're 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 looking at everything all the options right now and I'm that's actions speak louder than words you can tell me that you're you know you're comfortable or you're, you're you know you're settled with what we have here or um comfortable with what we have in the quarterback room but your actions are not saying that at all he also they also asked some question about the, the wide receiver room they talked about Hyatt. they talked about wandell robinson and again he has um high expectations for wandell he has high expectations for Jalen Hyatt. These guys need to develop. These guys need to um, show some progress. And um, hopefully, hopefully these things work out. Because, again, we when we look at this wide receiver room, Slayton is what it is right now with him. But you have Hyatt. You have um, you have Wandell Robinson. You have Isaiah Hodgins coming back on a one-year deal. You have Isaiah McKenzie um, here now. You have uh, Gunnar Oshevsky, who's more of a special teams guy. Then you got guys like Bryce Ford Wheaton. That you also um, brought in. He's another developmental guy, um, height, weight, speed type of guy too. So, again, this is going to be a big off season. This is going to be a big draft. We only have six picks. I would love to try to get some more picks out of this out of this uh, draft, but who knows what's going to happen? Who knows what's going to happen? But that's going to be the video. Um, can't even say it's a quick recap. We're almost uh, you know a lot longer than I wanted it, wanted it to be. But I want to thank everybody for vibing with me. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And from one Giants fan to another, this is Big Dash Knows, Big Blue Nation. Let's go.